Oh, hey everyone. This video is about the time we lived in Roatan, Honduras for three months. Roatan is a little island off the coast of Honduras that's ideal for tourists, free divers, scuba divers, and everybody that loves fresh air, clean oceans, and healthy reefs. Let's pick this video up where we left off the last one, which is the time we lived in Peacocker, Belize, for several months. Leaving Belize City, we jumped on a very small plane and flew over to Roatan. I think there was a total of maybe eight seats in that plane. There was three or four of us on it, including the pilot. After a short bumpy ride, we arrived at Roatan Airport. And now it's time to go check out our accommodations for the next few months. The villas we ended up staying in were very comfortable. Had a little bit of everything and we could stay there for days on end and be entertained with all the different things that had going on there. It was uh, four or five stories high. It had a rooftop terrace where you could go up there and enjoy a beautiful 360 degree view, have a nice bevy, look out over the ocean, watch a sunrise or a sunset. The place had a very relaxing, cool atmosphere. We ended up spending a bunch of time there, relaxing, meeting and talking with other people. Lori and I arrived at the villa probably about a week or so before everyone else got settled in. Shortly after that, we welcomed my dad and his wife. They came to stay with us for several months. My auntie came and stayed with us for some time as well, and it's always enjoyable to be able to spend time with family on these extended international stays. Because there were several people around, we ended up having uh, a few group dinners where we could make even more friends. One of our favorite activities into the night would be uh, having ping pong tournaments. And uh, those were a lot of fun. Sometimes they would get pretty competitive. You know, we'd stay up probably later than we should, playing music, staying hydrated, enjoying some ping pong action. For a change of pace, sometimes we would set up a DIY theater in the same area where we'd line up a bunch of lounge chairs, set up a projector and some speakers. Everybody would uh, bring their own snacks and uh, we'd make our own theater in the jungle. The villas were pretty close to the beach. It was about a five minute walk down the driveway through a dirt path, a little bit of jungle and you'd be at the beach. Sheltered, so there was kind of like a, a reef barrier in between the main ocean and the beach, which made it very tranquil for wading or swimming without the waves. You could walk out for a minute or two and be at the main break of the ocean. A few short swim strokes off that, you'd be on one of the healthiest, most beautiful reefs we've ever seen. So we ended up spending quite a few days around free diving and snorkeling over that reef. I thought it might be a good idea to practice holding my breath in the pool at the resort in the hopes that it would increase the amount of time I could uh, free dive on the reef. And while it probably did help a little bit, come to find out that holding your breath say on your couch in your living room is much easier than holding your breath in a pool, which is much easier than holding your breath on the reef. So if, for example, I could hold my breath for, let's say, 40 seconds in the pool, I could probably still only hold my breath for 15 or 20 seconds on the reef. A couple of the guys and I ended up going to get our spear fishing license. One of the guys ended up being pretty good at that, so he would regularly come home with fish. I wasn't so good at the spearing part of it, but I think I was okay at the cleaning part of it and I could definitely help eat the fish. When it came to choosing our transportation options here, we went with the scooter, one of the more economical, also nimble, popular ways to get around. Two of the young couples that were managing the villas, they had already purchased scooters, so through talking with them a little bit, we decided to go with basically the same. And this choice really opened up the island for us. In addition to opening up sights and sounds, this scooter also opened up my ankle, my knee, my elbow. So choose at your own risk. We were able to experience all different ends and sides of the island. So sometimes we would go over to the west end to do things like check out secret spots with super cool, but also sketchy rope swings.
this end of the island has some of the prettiest beaches on Roatan. It attracts the most tourists, more restaurants and bars. So at different times we'd go down there, whether it be alone or with friends, and enjoy several different activities, whether it be laying on the beach, taking in some sun, doing a little bit of snorkeling. Sometimes we'd go down there and uh, grab a pizza or some beverages. Maybe enjoy a sunset on the beach with friends or alone. Other times we'd go down and enjoy an evening of playing pool, listening to music, having some cigars, making some local friends. Every now and then if we wanted to blow off some steam, get all dressed up, head down there after dark, and uh, dance the night away, have a good time. If we wanted something a little bit lower paced, more tranquil, head to the east end of the island, where generally it's going to be less crowded, less tourists, so we get into beaches where no one else is on them. We'd find out of the way beach bars and restaurants, we could stop and sit out over the ocean and have a beverage, just us. You know, if we would hear about a celebration or a festival, sometimes we'd just round up the whole scooter gang and head out there, take in the celebrations with the people that lived on the island. And these were fun. They're usually high energy, very relaxed atmosphere, and it was fun to inject some energy into our day-to-day. -day. Other times we'd be able to explore the roads that went through some of the higher elevation hills on the island to get a different view, a different experience. I'm not sure if the island of Roatan has too many wild monkeys, but it definitely had a fair amount of captives. And there were several opportunities where you could interact with these little guys. And who doesn't love a monkey? Here's a clip of me and Mona, one of the local monkeys that was uh, kept nearby where we were living. This shot here is when she and I were still friends, getting along great. These were the happy times. Shortly after this, we got into a disagreement. I can't even remember what about something stupid like which channel to watch. But anyway, I still have the scar on my forearm right here from that disagreement. So again, when you're interacting with monkeys, they are still wild even if they look domesticated. And you know, cuddle at your own risk. For a change of pace, we would at times hire a boat or take a small boat tour. One tour had us go to a place called French Key, geared towards tourists and families. They would have several lounge chairs lined up there, rent stand-up paddle boards, snorkel equipment. They had a little zoo type scenario there. Another time we hired a captain, got a group of about well, maybe eight or ten of us, and we boated over to a more remote, tranquil island called Pigeon Key. Pigeon Key is basically the opposite of French Key. It's a small sliver in the middle of nowhere of uh, white sand, beautiful water. There's nothing on it, so it's not developed at all. Pristine, tranquil experience. We all enjoyed playing around there for the afternoon. Some of us got in the water and had a snorkel or a swim, playing catch with football, a little bit of fly fishing for me. Just generally had a blast. Probably one of the highlights of the little stay. Definitely created some of the best memories. Looking back on it, Roatan was probably one of the best places that we've lived internationally. In addition to the spectacular location, the vibrant reef and free diving scene, pleasant climate, good access to products and services. I think probably the thing that separated it from every other spot we've lived in it was the people. Normally when we're living away, Lori and I are fairly isolated, but in this instance, it was different because the villa had a fairly active social environment. So we were able to make many acquaintances and this for us really added to the overall energy and memories that we created through staying here. My name's Eric, this is Plan Free. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe to our channel. We'll be putting more videos out, for example, I think the next one will be the time we lived for five months in Sierra Bay, Costa Rica, which is the second time we have lived in Costa Rica.
and there'll be several others as we look back on the memories of living internationally and also uh, current videos that we'll be producing about living in different places like where we are now in Bali, Indonesia. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.